Sucralose is an artificial sweetener and sugar substitute. The majority of ingested sucralose is not broken down by the body, so it is non-caloric. In the European Union, it is also known under the E number E955. It is produced by chlorination of sucrose. Sucralose is about 320 to 1000 times sweeter than sucrose, three times as sweet as both aspartame and acesulfame potassium, and twice as sweet as sodium saccharin. Evidence of benefit is lacking for long term weight loss with some data supporting weight gain and heart disease risks. It is stable under heat and over a broad range of pH conditions. Therefore, it can be used in baking or in products that require a long shelf life. The commercial success of sucralose based products stems from its favorable comparison to other low calorie sweeteners in terms of taste, stability, and safety. Common brand names of sucralose-based sweeteners are Splenda, Zerocal, Sucrana, Sucraplus, Candies, Kukarin, and Nevela. Candrel Yellow also contains sucralose, but the original Candrel and Green Candrel do not. Uses Sucralose is used in many food and beverage products because it is a no-calorie sweetener, does not promote dental cavities, is safe for consumption by diabetics and non-diabetics, and does not affect insulin levels. Although the powdered form of sucralose-based sweetener product Splenda, as most other powdered sucralose products, contains 95% by volume bulking agents dextrose and maltodextrin that do affect insulin levels. Sucralose is used as a replacement for, or in combination with, other artificial or natural sweeteners such as aspartame, acesulfame potassium or high fructose corn syrup. Sucralose is used in products such as candy, breakfast bars and soft drinks. It is also used in canned fruits wherein water and sucralose take the place of much higher calorie corn syrup based additives. Sucralose mixed with maltodextrin or dextrose both made from corn as bulking agents is sold internationally by McNeil Nutritionals under the Splenda brand name. In the United States and Canada, this blend is increasingly found in restaurants, in yellow packets, in contrast to the blue packets commonly used by aspartame and the pink packets used by those containing saccharin sweeteners. In Canada, though, yellow packets are also associated with the Sugartwin brand of cyclamate sweetener. Topic. Cooking Sucralose is a highly heat-stable noncaloric sweetener, allowing it to be used in many recipes with little or no sugar. It is available in a granulated form that allows for same volume substitution with sugar. This mix of granulated sucralose includes fillers, all of which rapidly dissolve in liquids. While the granulated sucralose provides apparent volume for volume sweetness, the texture in baked products may be noticeably different. Sucralose is not hygroscopic, which can lead to baked goods that are noticeably drier and manifest a less dense texture than those made with sucrose. Unlike sucrose, which melts when baked at high temperatures, sucralose maintains its granular structure when subjected to dry, high heat e.g., in a 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius oven. Furthermore, in its pure state, sucralose begins to decompose at 119 degrees Celsius or 246 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, in some recipes, such as creme brulee, which require sugar sprinkled on top to partially or fully melt and crystallize, substituting sucralose will not result in the same surface texture, crispness, or crystalline structure. Health effects. Topic. Safety Sucralose has been accepted as safe by several national and international food safety regulatory bodies, including the FDA, the Joint FAO, WHO Expert Committee Report on Food Additives, the European Union Scientific Committee on Food, Health Protection Branch of Health and Welfare Canada, and Food Standards Australia New Zealand. According to the Canadian Diabetes Association, the amount of sucralose that can be consumed over a person's lifetime without any adverse effects is 9 mg per kilogram of body weight per day. In determining the safety of sucralose, the FDA reviewed data from more than 110 studies in humans and animals. Many of the studies were designed to identify possible toxic effects, including carcinogenic, reproductive, and neurological effects. 
No such effects were found, and FDA's approval is based on the finding that sucralose is safe for human consumption. For example, McNeil Nutritional LLC studies submitted as part of its U.S. FDA Food Additive Petition 7A3987 indicated that, in the two-year rodent bioassays, there was no evidence of carcinogenic activity for either sucralose or its hydrolysis products. Results from studies in the FDA approval process indicated a lack of risk associated with eating sucralose. When the estimated daily intake eddy is compared to the intake at which adverse effects are seen known as the highest no effects limit or HNEL at 1500 mg per kilogram BW per day a large margin of safety exists the bulk of sucralose ingested is not absorbed by the gastrointestinal tract gut and is directly excreted in the feces while 11 to 27% of it is absorbed the amount absorbed from the gut is largely removed from the bloodstream by the kidneys and eliminated in the urine, with 20-30% of the absorbed sucralose being metabolized. This means that only between 2-8% of sucralose consumed is metabolized, on average. Animal studies suggest that there may be a link between sucralose and a reduction in beneficial gut bacteria, with concerns this could result in digestive issues. Other The Center for Science in the Public Interest, a consumer advocacy group for food products, downgraded sucralose from safe to caution in June 2013, citing an unpublished study linking sucralose consumption with leukemia risk in rats. The study has been criticized as being poorly executed and reported. The study was published on 29 January 2016 in the peer-reviewed International Journal of Occupational and Environmental Health, and the Center for Science in the Public Interest downgraded sucralose from caution to avoid. According to a 2004 study, sucralose has not shown any DNA-damaging properties in DNA repair assays at normal consumption levels, and no evidence of carcinogenicity. Topic history Sucralose was discovered in 1976 by scientists from Tate and Lyle, working with researchers Leslie Huff and Shashikant Fodney at Queen Elizabeth College now part of King's College London. While researching ways to use sucrose and its synthetic derivatives for industrial use, Fodney was told to «test» a chlorinated sugar compound. Fodney thought Huff asked him to «taste» it, so he did. He found the compound to be exceptionally sweet. Tate and Lyle patented the substance in 1976. As of 2008, the only remaining patents concern specific manufacturing processes. A Duke University animal study funded by the Sugar Association found evidence that doses of Splenda, containing approximately 1% sucralose and approximately 99% maltodextrin by weight, between 100 and 1,000 mg per kilogram BW per day, containing sucralose at 1.1 to 11 mg per kilogram BW per day. Day, fed to rats reduced fecal microflora, increased the pH level in the intestines, contributed to increases in body weight, and increased levels of P-glycoprotein These effects have not been reported in humans. An expert panel, including scientists from Duke University, Rutgers University, New York Medical College, Harvard School of Public Health, and Columbia University reported in Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology that the Duke study was not scientifically rigorous and is deficient in several critical areas that preclude reliable interpretation of the study results. Sucralose was first approved for use in Canada in 1991. Subsequent approvals came in Australia in 1993, in New Zealand in 1996, in the United States in 1998, and in the European Union in 2004. By 2008, it had been approved in over 80 countries, including Mexico, Brazil, China, India, and Japan. In 2006, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration amended the regulations for foods to include sucralose as a non-nutritive sweetener in food. In May 2008, Fusion Nutraceuticals launched a generic product to the market, using Tate and Lyle patents. In April 2015 PepsiCo announced that it would be moving from aspartame to sucralose for most of its diet drinks in the U.S., due to sales of Diet Pepsi falling by more than 5% in the U.S. PepsiCo says its decision is a commercial one, responding to consumer preferences. 
In February 2018 PepsiCo went back to using aspartame in Diet Pepsi because of an 8% drop in sales for the previous year. Production Sucralose is manufactured by the selective chlorination of sucrose in a multi-step synthesis, which substitutes three of the hydroxyl groups of sucrose with chlorine atoms. This chlorination is achieved by selective protection of a primary alcohol group, followed by chlorination of the partially acetylated sugar with excess chlorinating agent, and then by removal of the acetyl groups to give the desired sucralose product. Packaging and storage Pure sucralose is sold in bulk, but not in quantities suitable for individual use, although some highly concentrated sucralose water blends are available online. These concentrates contain one part sucralose for each two parts water. A quarter teaspoon of concentrate substitutes for one cup of sugar. Pure, dry sucralose undergoes some decomposition at elevated temperatures. In solution or blended with maltodextrin, it is slightly more stable. Most products containing sucralose add fillers and additional sweetener to bring the product to the approximate volume and texture of an equivalent amount of sugar. Effect on caloric content Though sucralose contains no calories, products that contain fillers, such as maltodextrin and or dextrose, add about 2 to 4 calories per teaspoon or individual packet, depending on the product, the fillers used, brand, and the intended use of the product. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA allows for any product containing fewer than 5 calories per serving to be labeled as zero calories. One study suggests that artificial sweeteners may not fully activate the brains food reward pathways, as sugar does, stating that, because sweetener does not provide full satisfaction, the user may search for, and then eat additional high-calorie foods leading to weight gain. <inaudible> <inaudible> environmental effects According to one study, sucralose is digestible by a number of microorganisms and is broken down once released into the environment. However, measurements by the Swedish Environmental Research Institute have shown sewage treatment has little effect on sucralose, which is present in wastewater effluents at levels of several mu g, l ppb. No ecotoxicological effects are known at such levels, but the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency warns a continuous increase in levels may occur if the compound is only slowly degraded in nature. When heated to very high temperatures over 350 degrees Celsius or 662 degrees Fahrenheit in metal containers, sucralose can produce in the resulting smoke polychlorinated dibenzo P dioxins and other persistent organic pollutants. Sucralose has been detected in natural waters. Studies indicate that this has virtually no impact on the early life development of certain animal species, but the impact on other species remains unknown. See also Erythritol and xylitol Neotame, Paravia, Truvia, Stevia Tagatose Sugar substitute